The National Science Foundation is the civilian arm of DARPA. It, it is, and it has been. Since For those who aren't from D.C., will you explain what DARPA is? DARPA is the Pentagon's brain. Uh, DARPA is the reason that we have the Internet. You know, DARPA, the Internet started as a military technology to be able to send and receive information digitally because the Pentagon manages, you know, it's the largest employer in the United States. The Pentagon manages the American empire. When After World War II, we had this yawning empire stretching from here to, you know, to Latin America, to, to Europe under the Marshall Plan, you know, and all the way out to the Philippines and Asia. We had this worldwide empire. We had to manage all these counterinsurgency threats, all the domestic populations that were opposed to U.S. hegemony over their own over their own lands, and so the Pentagon had to be extremely versed in all the regions, understand what was happening politically, what was happening culturally, and so the Pentagon farmed out to U.S. universities. This is a part of why so much of U.S. universities, so much work is is funded by the Defense Department. And, and is funded by the National Science Foundation, its civilian civilian arm. In fact, the National Science Foundation is the leading subsidizer of all, it's, it's the leading source of funding for all higher education funds. It's, it's I'm not even, like people think we have a private, edu, you know, higher education market. We don't. It's subsidized by the U.S. government and that is a quid pro quo. But through There's, DOD. Through, but through DOD and through the National Science Foundation, which is the civilian, you know, which is, you know, but the National Science Foundation and, and even the story of the internet, again, it was created by the U.S. military and it was turned over to the National Science Foundation. And, that, and that's where the dual use comes in. When the military, you know, the military developed the cell phone, the military developed GPS, you know, the military developed uh, most of the technology at the R&D level that we now live under. In fact, the military developed all of the internet anonymity software in order to help Pentagon and CIA and State Department backed political groups be able to orchestrate regime change. You know, the VPNs, the Tor network, end-to-end encrypted chat, all these things were Pentagon projects before they became dual use, just like the internet became dual use. It was a military project, but then it be then the civilian commercial uh, architecture was built on top of it. But the National Science Foundation has two major domestic censorship programs. And in, in the charter documents establishing one of them in 2021, when, you know, in, February 2021, right when Biden, you know, the month after Biden took office. This is a this is a $40 million program. And in the charter document, it says that the purpose is to stop misinformation about democratic institutions. And they and one of the democratic institutions they define is the media. So understand this. This is the Pentagon civilian arm funding $40 million worth of censorship ex explicitly, exclusively censorship institutions to stop Americans from delegitimizing the media, to stop Americans from undermining trust in media. If North Korea did this, we would pass sanctions on them. If Iran did this, we would pass sanctions on them. This is because establishment media, and again, politically aligned media with the blob, has to be propped up as a buffer to drown out the voices of populace. So the, so the strategy here is twofold turning up the knobs of the blobs propaganda channels and turning down the knobs of anyone who opposes that because you can win two ways. You can win, you know, well, three ways. You win in a fair fight or you can win by super saturating your own media voice or you can win by default because the opposition political party, the opposition political movement is not allowed. This is why the U.S. State Department after 2016 established in like 140 countries now these censorship programs in the name of countering disinformation, in the name of media literacy, in the name of digital resilience. They have all these branding terms for it because uh, th they perceived this El Dorado gold mine of, of a new method for, for total political control over a region, which is winning by default by winning by censorship. A lot of times people don't believe State Department propaganda. They don't believe CIA propaganda. And so no matter how much money you pump into the region, no matter $5 billion Victoria Nuland bragged about being pumped into Ukrainian civil society ahead of the Maidan protests, it still did not penetrate Eastern Ukraine, which broke away within the Donbass. It still did not penetrate Crimea, who, uh, you know, voted shortly after to, to join the Russian Federation in, in, a, in a democratic vote. So they, from their perspective, funding propaganda was not enough. 
we need to kill the ability to surface al alternative ideas because then, then they can't even make a counter argument. Even if they don't believe the propaganda, there's simply no other choice in the room. You don't get access to the other ideas. You don't get access to the other data points or news events that might undermine public trust in the State Department's preferred narrative. This is what, where malinformation came from. Mis, dis, and malinformation. You may have heard that phrase. Misinformation is something that is false, but you, you know, it was an innocent mistake. Disinformation is it's wrong, but you did it on purpose. Malinformation is it's right, but it still undermines public faith and confidence in something that's more important. This is why, for example, you had the censorship of COVID in the name of, of malinformation. You're banning people from telling the truth. Yes. So how are you not like just full blown on Satan's team at that point? You're, you're not allowing your own citizens to tell the truth. You're, yeah. you're forcing lies at the point of a gun. This is literally what the federal government's partners pressured Use and exploiting government pressure and threatening them with with crisis PR, if they uh, if they allowed true statements about COVID nineteen to be articulated, if they you know and this came out in the Twitter files for example, you know where you had entities like the Virality Project who were who were telling Yul Roth and, and Vijay Gotti, the you know the the former Twitter one censorship team that you need to censor you know self reported uh, you know vaccine adverse events because. Even if these things are true, they still undermine public faith and confidence in the efficacy of vaccines. They, right, and they might increase vaccine hesitancy. Once people realize it can hurt them, like they don't want to take it. Right. And part of the issue is, is their their initial solution to this was fact checkers. But the problem is, and, and trying to get legitimacy for censorship because fact checkers identify something is wrong. But the problem is fact checkers are slow. Fact checkers have limited influence on certain platforms. And so... You can't hire enough fact checkers. And also, a lot of times the fact checkers can't prove something's wrong. You're citing CDC data. You know, you're you're citing a widely reported mainstream media uh, event, but you can still get it banned under the category of malinformation because it still undermines public faith and trust in a critical narrative. So it's sort of this censorship mercenary ecosystem created to protect noble lies, but noble lies at home and also no, and also noble lies abroad. So this is why I come back to the U.S. State Department, and maybe this is a good time to introduce, you know, the the Telegram, you know, issue here, which is that you had this strange situation where the government of France arrested Pavel, and it took everyone by surprise. And this is a major, major act, which has major implications for U.S. platforms. The fact is, is if Pavel is liable for Every act of speech, criminally liable, every act of speech on his platform, there's no reason that the head of Rumble, the head of X, the head of YouTube, the, everybody can't be hauled in for 20 years the moment they step foot in Paris as yeah, well. Yeah, they could all die in prison for letting people criticize their governments. Like, Right. It is a major diplomatic event. It impacts U.S. national champions. It impacts U.S. citizens. The U.S. embassy in France its job, the only reason it's there is to protect U.S. In national interests, U.S. citizens, and U.S. corporations from hostile foreign laws in France, hostile foreign actions by France. And given how critical Telegram is to the U.S. militarily, to the U.S. on statecraft grounds, to the U.S. on intelligence grounds, again, as we speak, in dozens of countries, Telegram is the main artery of the CIA for for cultivating political resistance movements. And so the impact on the United States is absolutely massive of, of doing this. And again, as, as you know, as we discussed, the United States has funded you know Ukraine with about almost $300 billion. And Ukraine's military intelligence chiefs say that they need to get control over Telegram's back end to, to know whether or not the Russians are in control of it and to get control essentially over its front-end content moderation policies to ban Russian propaganda channels. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. We hope you'll subscribe to it. And by the way, you can hit the little bell on there and get notifications every time we produce a video. We hope you'll do that also.